Okay, now it's time to see what's wrong with the lawnmowers and weed eaters that I was garbage picking, you know, from a couple days ago. But an update. I went out garbage picking the next day in the neighborhood that's across from where I live. And it's not as good a neighborhood. It's called Northridge and Grenfell. I got these two lawnmowers. That one's partially disassembled but looks like it's all there. And I got two weed eaters and that's all I got in that neighborhood. There's the three weed eaters I got the day before and the lawnmowers and stuff I got the day before are in the garage and all around. So let's first take a look at this one. Actually not. I did look at this one just for a second and I had to replace the squeezy bulb and I have to replace a broken fuel line and I ran out of that size of fuel line so you'll have to wait to see if it's going to be good but it's got piles of compression. So we'll go through just a procedure to check on this still one first. It has piles of compression. It came with no gas. Everything's exactly as I found it. Haven't been able to see anything wrong with it. So first thing you do is check the condition of the spark plug and check the conditions of the fuel lines. Open the gas cap and make sure your little fuel strainer hasn't broken off with its pipe too and fallen deep inside. So fuel line is connected and onto the filter too. Looks good on the outside. Now to check the spark plug. Looks fairly new but it's a bit oily for some reason. It's probably no big deal. Reconnected the wire, ground it out on that screw and check if we have spark. If we don't, I can get a brand new magneto from Still for free because they have a lifetime warranty. And of course it's turned on. We have spark. We're in business. Spark plugs back in. So next step before I proceed on any weed eater and start cleaning the carb or fixing it up, I always determine if the motor's good. So even if the carb's totally bad, if you dump a half a teaspoon of two-stroke gas, which that's what that stuff is, into the carb, hold the throttle wide open, make sure it's turned on, it should start up rev high and die. Well, if that happens, I'm on to checking the carburetor, adding gas, whatever, see what's the next step. Eh, little spillage doesn't hurt. Sweet! That ran a long time for a little dab of gas. So my still is a good weed eater. Took so many pulls at first because it was just flooded, but always hold the throttle wide open when you're trying to start them with a little squirt of gas. Now to add some gas to the gas tank and see if it'll prime itself and actually see if the carb doesn't need cleaned. So I've got the gas tank half full and obviously since it just ran and died the carb is completely empty, so I give it another tiny shot of gas. There we go, a little bit too much, but anyways. And that might be enough gas to get her to self-prime once the engine starts running, because this particular model doesn't have a squeezy bulb to prime it with, unlike that one. Little flooded again. I've got the top off the carb, and that's the needle right there, and below that's the seat. And I've just pushed on that little tab that that little button would be pushing on, and it's stuck. I don't want to push too hard because it'll bend it. The needle is stuck in the hole, it's not getting any gas from the tank. And obviously, by all the gas in the muffler and the cylinder, I had dumped too much in. So I've got a tiny screw and I'm going to 
work at the head of that needle and pry it up so I don't change the adjustment on anything. Well, that needle's really stuck. I'm going to have to take out the screw that holds the shaft in and grab it with needle nose pliers and try to pull it out. Come on. Oh, now it comes out no problem. So now just to reassemble those little parts. So now I've reassembled it. And the little lever is working perfectly and the needle's going up and down. So now I'll just put it back together. Now if you have an engine like this that doesn't have a primer squeezy bulb to prime it, you can put your mouth on the hole when there's gas in there and blow really hard and that will force fuel up into the little chamber and prime it without yanking and pulling it too many times. Well, we're ready to try it out now. It's on. Set the camera down. some uh, reassembly. Oops, turn it on. Well, next, let's see what's wrong. <laughs> 